Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Engelbard Gaming. Well, here I am in the flesh for the first time since my shoulder surgery. You won't see me moving this arm a whole lot during these video segments, so if things are a little bit weird, you know why. Also, forgive me a little bit of scruff. Shaving isn't the easiest thing in the world to do right now. I'm not trolling for sympathy or anything like that, just explaining why things might look a bit off for just a little while. Alright, on to the learning. Now this is the second episode of my Deflamask Genesis music tutorial series. If you haven't seen the primer or the first episode yet, I strongly recommend you view both of those first before continuing with this one. I'll have them in a handy dandy playlist so you can check those out before you go on. The primer covered the basics of how Genesis music works, while the first tutorial delved into the very basics of the program itself. So much like last time, I'm going to cover a variety of topics in today's video. I'm going to start out by doing a very quick review of what we covered in the first episode of the series. From there, I'll move on to showing you pretty much all of the menus and options in Deflamask. I'm not going to go into every single one in depth, but we'll look at all the ones that are important. After that, we'll move on to some fun with hexadecimal numbers. And then from there, we're going to go to FM Synthesis, which is the main event of this episode. Now, FM Synthesis is a huge topic unto itself, so I'm going to cover some of it today and some of it in the next video in the series. And, well, that's what we're doing today. Also, I've got another 10 copies of the full, complete, current version of Deflamask to give away. Now, I'm still a jerk, so I'm going to tell you how to win later in the episode, and it's going to be slightly different than last time. Now, if you're watching this video more than a day or two after it's gone live, chances are they're going to be gone already, but what I'll do is I'll put a giveaway status in the description of the video, so you can check and see if they're still available before you try and enter. Alright, let's get on with it. Let's review what I covered in episode 1. I told you about the elements of the user interface. We have the pattern matrix here. Each pattern is a block of music, if you want, you can use patterns like measures in written music, but you don't have to. You can add, delete, and duplicate patterns. And remember, you can left or right click on the pattern numbers in the cells to increase or decrease them to repeat patterns that you use more than once. We looked at the main tracker area down here where we enter notes and made a super awesome version of Mary Had a Little Lamb. It was incredible, wasn't it? Remember, the rows of keys, starting with the letter Q and the number 1, are the keys in the currently selected octave and mimic the white and black keys on a piano. Likewise, the rows of keys, starting with Z and A, are one octave below the currently selected octave. You also get some extra keys in each row if you're using the current version of Deflamask versus the legacy, aka free, version of Deflamask. I also walked you through this area here with the instruments and we covered how to load, add, or copy instruments. Remember, saving and loading is done in the instrument editor in Legacy, but right in the instrument section in Current. Then just to the right of that we have the section with all the timing and octave info. Do you remember the two different numbers we have in the timing section here? The first number controls even rows, the second controls odd rows. Then we have the general speed of the song. We've also got clock speed here, which will let you make finer adjustments. Finally, the last thing I touched on were some basic menu options, but I didn't really delve into it. Which is where we're going to kick things off with the new stuff for today. Like last time, I'll be showing you how everything I cover works in both the legacy and current versions of Deflamask. Let's check out these menus. Alright, so menus, we'll look at legacy Deflamask first. We've got File, Edit, Options, and About. Under File we have New, which opens a new blank tracker sheet, and closes anything you currently have open. Open will let you load an existing Deflamask tracker file, which will have the extension .dmf. Save will just save your current file under the existing file name and will overwrite any existing file. Save As lets you save the current song under a new name, which is handy if you want to have multiple versions of a song in various states of progress. Save ROM exports your song to a ROM file, which you can then open in a Genesis emulator or put onto a flash cart and play on a real Genesis. Save VGM exports your song to a VGM file, 
which you can import into lots of Genesis development software, including the SGDK. Export WAV will record a .WAV file, a digital recording of the music, which will play on any hardware that supports playback of WAV files. Load Skin lets you select the theme by clicking on an INI file. And Exit closes the program. Now what does that menu look like in the current Deflamask? Eh, almost exactly the same. All that's different is Load Skin has been removed because it's been renamed to Themes, which is in another part of the menu. Also, Exit was changed to Quit, but is functionally identical. And that's it. Alright, back to Legacy. Next up we have the Edit menu. Undo and Redo do just what they sound like. We've also got Cut, Copy, Paste, Paste Mix, and Delete, and they all also generally behave exactly as you would expect them to, and they use the standard keyboard shortcuts that you'd be familiar with in Windows. Things like Control c for Copy, Control v for Paste, Control x for Cut, and so on. Finally, we have Select All, Global Shrink, Global Expand, and Zap. Oh, and you can select all with Control a in Windows. You can hit it a few times to toggle between selecting a whole column, a whole channel, or a whole pattern's worth of data. For Global Shrink and Expand, we'll ignore those for today. And Zap lets you delete a bunch of stuff quickly at once and is a holdover command from older music trackers. In the current version of Deflamask, that menu is... expanded and actually lists the keyboard shortcuts right there, which is super handy. There are also a lot of additional options, but really, you won't be doing these things from the menu, you'll mainly be using the keyboard shortcuts. I'll cover things like increasing notes and octaves a little later in the series. Now, I'm not going to run down every single option in this menu since they're generally pretty self-explanatory. But if you're used to using Legacy and decide to move to the current paid version of Deflamask, you'll be right at home. Okay, back over to Legacy. We're just going to cover a little bit of what's here in this next section. You saw Change System in the last video, and that's what lets us change the active game system that we're creating music for, since Deflamask supports quite a few different ones. You can click Keyboard to see the keyboard commands. If you use a musical keyboard via MIDI, you can access it from MIDI, but I won't be covering that stuff in this tutorial. Poly Input lets you play multiple notes at once. Play on Load starts a song as soon as you load it without you having to manually click Play. Waveform shows the sound wave of your masterpiece under the Octave and Speed section. Show Piano toggles the piano keyboard on the bottom of the screen on or off. The highlight options let you highlight various rows. And we won't go into buffer. Now let's look at the current Deflamask. And whoa, things are a bit different here, aren't they? Follow Cursor toggles whether or not the screen scrolls along with the highlight line, showing the current line playing in the current pattern. Turn it off, and your screen stays static while the highlight line is off to the races. Repeat is whether the song stops at the end after completion, or keeps playing starting over from the beginning. Horizontal affects input. I recommend keeping that checked so you can type effects and parameters in more easily. Basic View strips a bunch of stuff off the screen and compresses the channels down if you want more screen real estate for other things. Set Data Path is the default location from where your files will save and open. The rest is basically MIDI stuff that we aren't covering and other user interface stuff. Let's stay in the current Deflamask since it has an extra menu option called Window. Here you can open the Instrument Editor and toggle almost everything that you see on the screen. If your pattern matrix ever vanishes and you don't know why, well, you may have just turned it off here by accident, which can be fixed easily enough. New to this version is the oscilloscope view, which is handy for making fancy looking YouTube videos with dancing sound waves. That's right, with this version of Deflamask, you don't need any other software to do that. Now here's maybe the most handy thing in the current version of Deflamask. The effects list. You can click that to quickly and easily bring up the list of effects supported by the active system, which is awesome. Before this, we had to run to the manual if we forgot what an effect was or how it worked. Also, don't worry about these yet. We won't be covering effects today, but we'll dabble in a few next time. Oh, and remember I talked about themes earlier? Skins is basically right here. This is where you can change the theme, 
which is streamlined and much easier in this version than the old version. Speaking of the old version, let's go back to Legacy. All we've got left to look at in the menus here is About, which gives you the expected info. And in current Deflamask, you can reset the tutorial that plays the first time you launch the software to see it again. You can quickly access the manual, which opens the PDF manual in a web browser, or you can see the About information. Alright, that was a big dump. Uh, I mean info dump. I don't know, here, look at a cat. Red alert! All hands to battle stations! Engage. I warned you'd we'd be covering hexadecimal digits today, and I'm sorry, but it's time. Oh, why do we need to learn this crazy computer stuff? Well, folks, because there are lots of effects that require you to enter parameters, and those parameters are often in hexadecimal format, or hex for short. But don't worry, there's no math involved, you'll basically just learn a new way of counting. The everyday system of numbers you're familiar with is base 10. It has 10 digits, 0 through 9, and all other numbers are made up of those 10 digits. Hex is a little different. It's base 16, meaning it has a total of 16 digits to represent a single column of numbers. Now how do we do that if we only have 10 numbers to represent digits? Easy. It adds a few letters into the mix. The full list of digits for hexadecimal numbers are 0 through 9, followed by A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now all you need to know is that A is higher than 9, B is higher than A, and so on. It's funny, if we look at 7F, which happens to be the maximum volume of a Genesis FM instrument, it's the same as saying 7015. Remember, while there are 16 numbers, the digits go from 0 through 15. If we see 7B, that's like saying 7011. If we see 79, well, that's still saying 79, 79. Now let's look at these two numbers. Tell me which one's bigger, 2F or 6A. If you said 2F, oh my god, pay attention. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. 2F is 2015, while 6A is 6010. Since 60-something is more than 20-something, 6A is the larger number. Now what's bigger, 1F or 20? In this case, 2-0 is one number higher than 115, so 20 is the higher number. We'll look at just two more of these. What's bigger, 5D or 5-9? 5D is the higher number. That's 50 and 13 versus 50 and 9. Final example. What's bigger, 7A or 7C? Yep, it's 7C. See, you got this. Now that's really all you need to know, which numbers in hex are larger and smaller than others. So this part of the lesson is done, my musically inclined retro gaming friends. Now we're going to start talking about FM sound and dealing with instruments. At the end of the last episode, I gave you some homework. You were supposed to just open up some of the instruments that are included with Deflamask and mess around with them. Did you do that? If not, go ahead and pause this video and do that now. Just try a few of them out, hear the differences in how they sound and get a quick feel for them. If you just look at three or four, that should be enough. Alright, I'm going to assume that you either did that now or earlier, and I'm going to continue. FM stands for Frequency Modulation. On FM sound chips, when we create sounds, we're engaging in FM synthesis. If you look up the definition online, you'll find a bunch of fancy terms like waveforms, oscillators, modulation, amplitude, and stuff like that. If you want to delve into the nitty-gritty of it, well, you can do that. It's a pretty interesting topic. But here, in this video, in this series, I'm going to limit the scope of what I cover and just give you the basics of what you need to know on how to make sound instead of doing a huge long explanation of FM synthesis. This is not a be-all, end-all FM encyclopedia. This is a tutorial designed to give you a push to get started with creating your own sound. 
All right, let's open up the instrument editor. In Legacy Deflamask, you can just click on Edit next to the instrument in the instrument list. In Current Deflamask, you can just hit F1 or go to the menu and select Show Instrument Editor. Oh, there we are. We took a glance at this window last time, but today we're going to go into a little more detail. Let's look at that cluster of four things up at the top of the editor window first. FMS stands for Frequency Modulation Sensitivity. The higher you raise this up, the greater the frequency will shift, resulting in a vibrato-like effect. If you don't know what vibrato is, it's just a fancy way of saying the sound vibrates. Next to that, we have AMS, or Amplitude Modulation Sensitivity. It's kind of similar to frequency modulation, but it results in more of a tremolo-like effect, where the volume shifts up and down instead of the pitch. Now, the absolute strength of these two effects are governed by the LFO, or Low Frequency Oscillator. Now, don't worry, it's not as bad as it sounds. It's just a setting that basically lets you determine how strong the vibrato and tremolo effects can work. You'll probably rarely ever adjust this. Most of the time, you'll just leave it at default, especially when you're just learning. For this tutorial, I'll be leaving the LFO at the default setting, but we'll cover it in more detail a little later. A little later, as in a future episode. Next up is FB, which stands for Feedback. It's a little tough to define exactly what it is. Basically, it's when an operator modulates itself. The operators are the four things below this. We talked about those last time and will again in a moment. Now, Feedback only affects Operator 1. It doesn't do anything to any of the others. For instruments, we can use it to improve the realism in stuff like electric guitars, pianos, or even strings. And the final thing in this section is the ALG, or algorithm. What is that? Well, for the sake of brevity here, we'll call that the sort of flavor of the sound. I'll toss a few links about FM algorithms into the description if you want to know more. And we have eight algorithms to select from, and the type of sound that you can create in each one will be different. Some are better for brass, some for strings, some for organs, and so on. Next up, we have our four operators. You can turn them on or off with the button in the upper right of each one. Now let's talk about those sliders on the left of each operator. A is for attack, or how fast the sound starts. D is for decay, or how fast or gradually the sound ends. S is for sustain, or how long the sound is held. D2 is a second decay parameter. And R is release, which determines how long it takes for the sound to fade away. And we have a neat little graph of the waveform to the right and some more things underneath that. Let's briefly talk about those things underneath. Mult is the multiplier, and it's the most important thing here, and the one that you will change most often. It'll tweak how your sound, well, sounds. <laughs> low multipliers produce lower pitch sounds. Higher multipliers produce higher ones. The way they work is different depending on the algorithm selected. RS is another release parameter that you can use to tweak just how quickly the sound stops or cuts off. But this time, it's a real rough tool with just four settings, numbered 0 through 3. 0 is your maximum that will hold the sound the longest. 3 will cut your sound off for this operator very quickly. Next, we have DT, which stands for Detune. We can use this to tweak the sound a bit, and it's especially noticeable when used with FMS or AMS. Finally, for this section, we have the SSG. For now, I'm going to say, don't use it. Just leave it alone. It's a more advanced thing, and you'll just want to make sure that the SSG checkbox below it is unchecked for any of the work we do in this tutorial series. We'll come back to it later as we get towards the end of things. The AM checkbox turns on amplitude modulation and is affected by the AMS parameter up at the top. The last thing in this section is TL, which is on the right, and that stands for Total Level. This is basically how much of the operator will be in the final sound. It's sort of like volume, but not exactly. That's just the easiest way to describe what it does. Okay, so that might seem like information overload. Just take a breath. Look at a cat. We're gonna get through this. I promise the worst of it is over now. 
Don't even worry about it too much. What these things do will all become second nature. You'll never need the definitions again. But if you do want to refer back to them, hey, you've got them here in this video, or you can find them in the manual or elsewhere online. Let's make an instrument. I'll ruin the surprise completely and tell you we're going to create a pipe organ. Why? Because they sound pretty realistic on this chip, and it seems like most other tutorials start with the pipe organ for some reason. I just want to be part of the crowd, man. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> for this one, we're going to change the algorithm to 7. And by the way, pretty much all organs you create will be using either algorithm 7 or 6, but I digress. The algorithm in this case should be set to 7. Let's set the octave to 4. Now, we're going to play with all those enticing little operator sliders. You know what? Go ahead and slide every last one of them all the way down to the bottom. All the ones on the left and uh, on the right also. We want to slide the TL all the way down to the bottom. For MULT and RS, slide those all the way to the left. DT should be in the middle to be at zero. Uh, for the SSG, just make sure it's slid all the way to the left and that the box under it's unchecked. And for the TL on the right, just slide that all the way down. Now make sure Deflamask is not in record mode. Now just click anywhere on the tracker and press a key to play a note. Wait a minute. Are you not getting any sound? You must have done something wrong. Weren't you paying attention? All right, all right, I've had my fun. It's supposed to do that with the way we set it up. Now let's go to the TL on operator 1. For TL, 0 is up at the top, and 127 is at the bottom. Raise the TL on operator 1 to about 15. And now move the D slider on operator 1 to 4. Now go ahead and play a few notes, and you should get some sound for real this time. See? Next, let's change the MULT in operator 1 to 2. Play some notes again. Hey, you can hear those are higher pitch. Now let's change those other sliders. For S, make it 4. For D2, let's make that 10. And for R, let's make that 5. Play a few more notes after making those changes. You hear the difference? Now let's drop the MULT on operator 1 down to 1. Play a few more notes again. Okay, so let's do this next. For all the sliders in operators 2, 3, and 4, go ahead and match those up exactly to the ones we set up for operator 1. Don't forget to change TL and MULT on each one. Go ahead and do that now. Hmm, that doesn't sound very pipe organ-y, does it? Let's do this next. Change the MULTs in each operator. In 1, let's make it 2. In operator 2, let's make it 4. In operator 3, we'll leave it at 1. In operator 4, let's drop that to 0. Go ahead and play a few more notes now. Hey, that sounds much more pipe organy, doesn't it? Let's change FMS to 4 and FB to 7. Let's also go to operator 4 and change the TL to 8, the R to 3, and the S to 1. Try again now. Hmm, that's weird. Let's lower the FB to 5 and try again. Still kind of weird, right? That's the feedback sort of distorting operator 1 a little bit. Let's drop FB all the way down to 0 and play a few more notes. Ah, that's better. So now you've just made yourself a perfectly serviceable pipe organ. It's not the best ever, but I'm doing this lesson this way on purpose. Why? Because I want you to experiment with all the settings to gain experience with them. You can take this pipe organ and make it sound even better and more realistic. How? Well, I'm not going to tell you that right now. But I'll show you another one before we finish up. Your job at the moment is to play with the five sliders on the left, and then the TL, the MULT, and the RS on each operator. You can also mess around a little with FMS, AMS, and FB. So just experiment. I'll say spend five or so minutes doing that, and then come back to me here. Okay, here's a little bit of a pipe organ that I've created to use with some songs that I've done, some of the covers you can find on my music channel. 
Now this is still not the perfect pipe organ or anything like that, and I have created several different ones that I use in different songs for different purposes when I need a different type of sound. And really, we're going to see a lot of that, and a much better example of it coming up in just a few minutes. Oh yeah, free copies of Deflamask, right? I'm giving away 10 this time, as I said earlier, and it'll be different than the last time. The basic rules of the giveaway are the same. Winners get one copy for your OS of choice. Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, or Android. If you won a copy last time, you're not eligible this time. Not even for a different OS. Sorry. To enter the giveaway this time, just comment on this video and say this exactly. I want to make Genesis music in Deflamask. It has to be that exactly. The first qualifying 10 comments I see will win. The process will be the same as last time. You comment, and then I comment back, telling you that you won and to email me with your details. After I confirm your eligibility, I'll secure you a copy from Delic, and then I'll send it to your email address of choice. Now I expect these this time will likely be gone in around 24 to 48 hours, so if you're seeing this video, you know, several days after it was originally posted, check the description to see if they're all given away or not before you post a comment. Now who knows, maybe somebody who wins won't be eligible and a slot will open up later. But I'll add a note near the top of the description once they're all given away so everyone will know. And like last time, winners allow me to use your username and real last names will be omitted if necessary in a future episode so I can prove that I gave away all these things as promised. Back to business. Now did you come up with anything cool? Remember, you can save the instrument. In Legacy Deflamask, you just click Save in the Instrument Editor. In Current, you have to hit the disk icon at the top of the instrument list. Now let's move on and create another instrument. I'll ruin the surprise again here and tell you that this will be a brass instrument, sort of trumpety. Again, I'm not giving you the absolute perfect trumpet. I'll get you on the right track so you can tweak everything yourself. So go ahead and do these things next. First, set the ALG to 5, then set FMS to 3, and then AMS to 1, and FB to 7. For Operator 1's sliders, set A to 24, D, S, and D2 to 0, and R to 6. Set the Molt to 4, RS and DT to 0. Then set TL to 30. For Operator 2, set A, D, S, D2, and R exactly the same as in Operator 1. Then set Molt to 8, RS and DT to 0, and set TL to 14. For Operator 3, for those first five sliders, we will again match the first two operators. Then set Molt to 12, RS to 0, DT to 0, and TL to 10. Finally, for Operator 4, set A to 31, D, S, and D2 to 0, and R to 4. Set Molt to 4, and set TL to 13. Alright, we're done. Go ahead and play your trumpet a bit. It'll sound especially nice in Octave 3. Go ahead, give it a shot. Not too shabby, right? I mean, like I said, it's not perfect or anything. It won't be the best you can hear on this FM chip, you can get closer, but take a few minutes again to go ahead and try and tweak some settings on your own to see if you can improve it. And here are some that I use in some of my SNES covers that I tweak depending on the song. All the settings are on screen here, and I'll leave it up just for a moment so you can get a look at it if you want to try using this one sort of as a guide for yourself. Now one of the key things to take note of is that operators 1 and 2 can often play an outsized role in what the final sound is like, and that's in large part because of operator 1 having the feedback parameter and operator 2 often working on operator 1. If you start raising the TL on operator 1 while the feedback is set pretty high, you'll notice there's a threshold in each algorithm where it'll just sound staticky and like scratchy garbled noise. What's kind of nuts about this 
is it can go to that very quickly. So you might have it sounding awesome and then just tweak it like three notches and suddenly it sounds terrible. So you'll need to do a lot of fine tuning and experimenting to get it to sound just like you want it to. Alright, we're going to take a look at just one more instrument today, but before we do, I think we need another cat break, don't we? You've earned it. Isn't he adorable? Okay, back to business. Now this next instrument will be a bit of a surprise. Let's start off by changing the octave to 5. After that, let's open the instrument window and begin the instrument by selecting, oh, algorithm 5. We're also going to go ahead and set feedback to 7, which is all the way up. Alright, for the first 5 sliders, we'll just go left to right here. So starting in operator 1, starting at A, change the 5 parameters with sliders to... 28, 4, 1, 8, and 5. For the next four sliders under the waveform, set MULT to 1, RS to 1, DT and SSG should be 0, and TL to 34. For operator 2, starting at A with the first five sliders, make those 28, 5, 1, 3, and 5. Set MULT to 4, RS to 3, DT to 0, SSG to 0, and TL to 17. For operator 3, starting at A again, set the sliders to 29, 8, 1, 7, and then 5. Set MULT to 1. RS to 0, DT and SSG to 0, and TL to 13. For operator 4, starting at A, set the sliders to 22, 9, 2, 6, 5. Then set MULT to 1, RS to 2, DT and SSG to 0, and set TL to 3, which is near the maximum. Whoops, I forgot to adjust the TL of operator 1. Let's fix that real quick. All right, now play a few notes on the QWERTY row of keys. Not a bad little FM piano, right? Change the octave to 6 and check it out. Still pretty nice, huh? It even holds up pretty well at octave 7. See? But here's where things get a little interesting. Change the octave down to 3 and try it again. Now, as you can tell, it doesn't sound anywhere near as realistic at the lower octaves. And this is a problem, like I mentioned earlier, that you'll run into when making your own instruments all the time. Very often, they'll sound their best in a particular range of notes. Go too high or too low, and suddenly, they just don't sound nearly as good. So what can you do in these situations? Well, I kind of gave away the answer before, but that's fine. The answer is to make a similar instrument that sounds better in the problem ranges of the first instrument. You might even want to make two or three more, depending on how specialized your needs are for the song you're working on. Now go ahead and save this piano before we start changing anything. Now let's mess it all up. We're going to basically create a whole new instrument here, so I'll give you settings just like last time. Ready? We'll leave FB at 7, but we'll change the ALG to 2. Now in operator 1, make the sliders 28, 4, 1, 0, and 5. We'll set MULT to 1, RS to 2, DT and SSG to 0, and TL to 34. For operator 2, change the first 5 sliders to 27, 9, 1, 1, 5. Set MULT to 8, RS to 2, DT to 0, SSG to 0, and set TL to 42. For operator 3, change the first five sliders to 31, 4, 1, 3, and 3. We'll set MULT to 3, RS to 1, DT to 0, SSG to 0, and TL to 30. Finally, for operator 4, we'll make the first sliders 31, 7, 3, 2, and 4. 
set mult to 1, RS to 2, DT to 0, SSG to 0, and TL to 10. Now before we play any instruments, go ahead and change the octave down to 2 if you haven't already. Now play some notes in the QWERTY row of keys. Hey, the lower notes on this piano sound a lot more piano-y and more realistic than the lower notes in that first piano we made. That's a big improvement, isn't it? Now keep in mind, all these settings I'm giving you, they're not the be-all, end-all, definitive way to create any specific instrument. I've been guiding you so you can see what kind of sounds and variations are possible. And when you hear some of these instruments, you'll wonder why Genesis games didn't sound like this during the system's commercial lifetime. And really, the only theories I have on that are that we have better tools, software, and drivers now than the original developers and musicians did back in the day. Alright, so I don't want to overload you with FM stuff today. We're going to cover FM instruments more in the next episode after all. But I'll go over a few other things before we wrap this particular episode up. Now I know you probably want more from a tutorial showing you how to arrive at the specifics of what settings to use to create instruments, and how you should know these things. The problem we arrive at here is that there's often a lot of different ways to come up with the same instruments, or different variations of the same instruments at least, so there's no real set answer to that. However, there are some general guidelines I can give you about what algorithms tend to be good for what types of instruments, and some very general settings that will at least set you on the right path. And, well, that's what I'm going to do right now. Then we'll finish up. Alright, so I'm going to keep this part a little brief and general, but here we go. For guitars, whether acoustic or distortion, you'll usually get good results if you stick to algorithms 0 through 3. They can work in some of the others with some extensive tweaking, and keep in mind with acoustic especially, to get a good pluck sound, you'll want to set up your decay so it fades pretty quickly, so pay attention to those D, D2, and RS settings of your operators. For distortion guitars, you'll want to really ratchet up the feedback and apply a high TL to the first operator, high meaning towards the top. For pianos, well you can get them sounding pretty good in algorithms 2, 5, and sometimes even 6 and 7, depending on your specific needs. The key here is using feedback, or the FB parameter effectively, which, remember, only affects operator 1. For strings, which we'll look at in the next episode, well, those are some of the trickiest instruments to reproduce in FM, but I find they work best in algorithms 2, 4, 5, and 6, depending on the specific needs of the song. Vibration is key to replication of a string-like sound, so FMS and AMS will be important, as can the DT settings in each operator. For organs, you'll probably want to stick to algorithms 6 and 7 for the most part. Play with the multipliers and you'll find you can recreate all types of organ sounds. Check out some of the ones included in Deflamask to get some pointers, there are some good ones. For flutes, piccolos, and things like that, get ready to be upset when I tell you that they can work okay in pretty much any algorithm. You just have to tweak the settings, particularly AMS, FMS, and the multipliers, to get the specific sound you want. For a nice sounding harp, I suggest sticking to algorithms 6 or 7 and tweaking all the settings related to decay. You'll probably want maximum feedback again, and really, it's kind of similar to the piano sound when you get down to things. So you're just going to tweak the piano slightly to come up with the harp. For a good bass sound, well, those can work in most algorithms. 0 and 4 seem to work particularly well though. Generally, you'll want to keep most of the multipliers pretty low, as in 1 or 0, but often you'll want to take one operator and raise the multiplier higher than the rest while keeping the others low to give the sound a good pluck or twang that simulates many types of real bass instruments. Also, you'll want to have them decay pretty quickly most of the time, but have a pretty good sustain level. For bells, they tend to sound best in algorithm 6, but they can work in others like 4 and 7, depending again on the specific sound you're going for. A little vibrato, longer delays, and varying levels of feedback can really help fill out the sound. And so there you go, that's a pretty handy cheat sheet to help you get started with what instruments sound good in which algorithms. Again, I strongly recommend checking the pre-made instruments either included in Deflamask or ones that you can download from various sources 
to see practical examples of how these things work, and I would again encourage you to modify those a bit on your own to see what happens when you change various parameters. And I advise you to adjust just one parameter at a time, play some notes, adjust it again, and that way you'll hear the difference each time you make one adjustment. And it's really the only way to learn exactly how all those sliders actually affect things. Doing things practically will show you more about how they work than just reading about them or watching someone else do it. Alright, we're going to wrap this thing up with another little trick. And for this trick, we're going to use our very first effect. Now first, go ahead and load the high piano that you saved earlier. And then we'll go on to the tracker grid and deflamask. We're going to put a few chords into this. And I'm going to run through this part real quickly, so don't worry about following along. I'll explain it afterwards. Okay, so I've clumsily entered a few chords with a few notes between them. But this doesn't sound enough like a real piano, does it? Something's missing, something's off. And that something, my friends, is delay. Very often when you hear a real piano played, there's a slight delay as each finger presses each note in a chord. And guess what? We can replicate that in Deflamask. First thing we're going to have to do are some minor speed adjustments. I'm going to change speed A and B to 4 and adjust the hertz up a little bit to give us some wiggle room for this effect. Okay, that'll do. Now, there's an effect that lets us tell the program to wait a specified number of ticks before it plays a note and a track. What's a tick? For our purposes here, imagine it's the speed of the A and B row numbers. And only the lower of the two matters for this part. Now, since we're using the same for each, we don't have to worry about that. Now, the command we're going to use for delay is ED. All effects commands are two characters. Now, how do I know that ED is the one to use? Well, RTFM. But seriously, read the manual. I learned it from reading the manual. In Legacy, you have to read the manual. In current Deflamask, you can at least open this handy dandy screen to show you the effect cheat sheet for whatever system you're currently working on. Now watch me sloppily fix my mistakes here. Oh, and for copy and paste on this part, I'm just using Control c and Control v on the keyboard. Now let's play it. Can you hear the difference from before? It may not sound quite so obvious. Let's slow down the speed a little bit and listen again. Can you hear the difference now? It's subtle, but it really helps certain instruments and sounds jump out and feel more authentic. You can also emphasize this by moving the chord notes into later rows and use extra delay commands to fine-tune the length of time before each note plays. So in plain English, just move it down on a lower row and then also add a delay if you want to give it some extra standout. Now, pretty cool, right? This works especially great on pluck-style instruments like pianos, guitars, and harps. And now, it's time to wrap this up for today. So let's summarize what we covered in today's episode of the tutorial. 1. We covered the menu options in both Legacy and current Deflamask. 2. We covered hexadecimal numbers, which will be important as we go on. 3. We covered some very general information on FM synthesis. 4. I showed you how to make a few specific instruments and had you mess around with them on your own to tweak them. 5. I gave you a bit of a cheat sheet to help guide you on making your own FM instrument sounds. And 6. I introduced you to effects with the delay command. Not bad for a day's work, I'd say. Now let me caution you a smidge and say that just because you watch this tutorial, you're not going to magically know or remember everything you've seen in this video. Like developing any skill, it takes real hands-on practice to improve. And for most people, that improvement will come slowly. So if you're interested in this, don't be discouraged if it takes you a while to get anything that I cover here. We all learn at different speeds. Alright, enough preaching on this. On the agenda for next time, some more FM instrument stuff, and we'll start some very basic effects. And who knows, maybe I'll throw in a surprise or two. Feel free to leave comments with any questions you have after watching this tutorial. And that'll do it for this video, my retro gaming and chiptune loving friends. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and toss it a like and share it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell 
so you'll never miss another one of my videos. If you want to help contribute to the channel by supporting me via either Patreon or Ko-fi, you can now do that. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later.